Hey everybody, and welcome to my N5 series on the SP404 Mark II, where I cover a topic in about five minutes. This is session 51.15, nice palindrome. Uh, I don't know, I'm just doing this as kind of a conclusion for 3.0 in general for the review here. Um, so I don't know, I might have some like different thoughts or plenty of stuff that I can certainly show in future videos to you guys for playing around with. Uh, by and large, DJ mode, I, I don't know, Roland, keep, Keep at it. I'm I'm digging what you guys are doing with uh, DJ mode. Still not quite what I'm looking for personally, but I think a lot of people will be able to get some good mileage out of it. I would still like to see some external uh, controls over MIDI so that I could really control things a lot uh, the way I want to and configure them, but that's cool. I do love the fact that in pattern mode, we can bounce out. I think that's going to be super handy and a big game changer for a number of people. And it's going to make it a lot easier for people that don't like the uh, the way that you'd resample a pattern and then have to go do end snap and all that. You're just going to be able to do it once, get it out there. Maybe you have to double it up to duplicate the pattern for a few reasons and then chop it into halves and take the second half or whatever. But I mean, by and large, I think that's going to be a huge quality of life improvement for people. I also like the, that we're able to record the automation for control knobs and turning effects on and off and selecting effects. I, I just think like that helps make the box stand up by itself a lot more than it has. You don't need an external device as much, but I'm, I will say I'm a little bit confused as to why we can't automate the second page of knobs. That seems a little silly to me. Maybe it was a oversight. Maybe we'll get that in the future. Although the, documentation for the release notes pretty clearly states that it's just for control knobs one through three. So I don't know why that's the, a restriction here. Like to, I would personally would love to see that get fixed, but Hey, this is totally a step in the right direction. Uh, what else did we have here? Uh, pad mute, another one. I think that's like going to be huge. Uh, I think pad mutes are going to help make people's tracks a lot more, they can build them up in different ways instead of having to like build very small and build up to something. You can go straight for like the, that huge track. You can use pad mutes to kind of have just one pattern and make variations, duplicate it, do all kinds of things. And this is a lot of the style of and workflow process that I've built up over the years on the MPC. I think it's really helping open up maybe not the exact same workflows, but really puts those things in a nice light for me. I think it, I, I can see that being a huge feature for me and trying to help show people how to use the 404 Mark II to just do cool, interesting stuff. Um, what else do we have here? I think copying the copying the patterns and be able to sele select which pads go in or don't is going to be really important uh, and is key for being able to open up some more workflows instead of having to just go in and then hold the delete button and delete one pad at a time or two pads at a time. I think it just really makes things faster, which honestly is seems what, like a lot about what 3.0 is about. It's just helping go faster, be more effective and efficient. I like being able to save mar the marks on our chops. A, because if we get a, you go spend that time chopping something up, having those marks there and be able to come back to them because you might have a drum chop that you only want like two things out of it, but for today, and then in the future you might come back and be like, I still really like this drum break. And I, now I want the hat out of it instead of the, like the kick and the snare. You don't have to go re chop and do all that. You've done the work once and then you get to keep taking and extracting value out of, out of that over and over. Super important. I I'm going to be honest. I still have no idea what the display of solo in TR rec mode has been made easier to understand. I don't understand this comment. I'm going to have to read the manual. That's on me, but I'll do that. Um, effects. Uh, what do we have here? Um, oh, saving the effect parameters. Super cool. I personally am probably not going to use it that much, but I can just foresee a number of people wanting to have consistent sets of effects. It's not exactly a favorites, the way the favorites work, where you can kind of save and recall stuff. You only get one per, it looks like you get one per effect. You get 41 effects. And it'd be like the next step might be a, being able to load up some default effect values for like different banks or of them or something. But 
I mean, totally a step in the right direction. I, I love that. Um, the I kind of went over a lot of this stuff. I think a lot of the miscellaneous stuff in here, getting the one terabyte SD card, I think it'd be cool. Although I always try and caution people like having a terabyte of samples, like you're never going to listen to everything on there. So like, is it really worth having it and carrying it around? I kind of like the 32 gigabyte limit because it just eventually it just makes you have to decide like this thing, this sample I actually want versus stuff that you're like, I don't care. I'm just going to delete it. But we go, we get, I don't understand what the fade out here is for. I was really hoping we would get something that would allow us to make like single cycle or at least very short cycle uh, looping sa uh, sounds that we could then come in and do, do some synth style programming. I'm not looking for a synth replacement, but I do think there's some room for improvement here where you can take some of these like really tiny bits of sound and then as soon as you let go of it, have the release continue afterwards. Maybe I'm doing it wrong, but it feels like that one is either doing something that different than what I'm expecting, or I just need like that as a feature personally. Well, I don't need a personal feature. I got plenty of other gear to do this stuff, but it would be nice to have, have that as just an option for being able to do some stuff creatively. Oh, uh, I think that's about it. Um, undo in the chromatic mode and 16 shot mode is nice. So overall, I can't like find anything to fault the 3.0 update on. I think this is just a nice iterative, consistent update for the device. Super happy to have it. Um, and all of us could probably make run on lists forever, but I don't see any features in here where I'm like, boy, that that's a bummer. I think it just makes a marked improvement on pretty much every little element and piece of how the SP404 Mark II works and workflows that I think a lot of us are using or will be bringing to this. So anyway, good job, Roland. Continue it. Love it. Um, not everything has to be about adding more effects in all the time. So, um, and yeah, the only thing I think we need is like a very well organized set of shortcuts somewhere. Um, I don't know if there's room to print something out or have a new faceplate here or maybe put a sticker on the back or something, but we are starting to get into shortcut overload, which is really my only concern. And honestly, you can ignore most of them until you need to know about them. So I think like the interface still is pretty straightforward to get in and go do stuff. So uh, happy to have it there. Thanks everybody. Keep making music. Keep having fun. If it sounds good, it is good. And peace.